Okay, we're standing here at Drimsali Hatchery uh, near Glenfinnan in Le Haber. Uh, I'm the hatchery manager, my name's John Gibb. Um, some years ago, back in uh, late 2021, uh, we approached Salmon Scotland with the idea of setting up a live salmon gene bank for nine different rivers in Loch Haber. And I'm really pleased to say that we got that up and running and what we've got today is different stocks of salmon in individual tanks here at the hatchery. Now, the reason that a uh, gene bank is thought to be necessary is some of the rivers in this region and indeed throughout the whole of Scotland, for a wide variety of reasons, have become very, very threatened indeed. Uh, their salmon populations are really in some rivers uh, on the brink of extinction. And when you have that scenario, the sensible thing to do is to bring in genetic material, the last surviving genetic material in the river, and holding it as an insurance policy. This is done throughout Norway, for example. They've been doing it for many, many years. But here in Scotland, we have not been doing this at all. And we think it's high time that just about every river has some sort of genetic material in captivity. So what we do is in the spring, we trap the wild smolts going to sea. Uh, these are then taken into the hatchery and then gradually brought onto a commercial diet. That's quite a challenge because these things are wild creatures and they don't know what a fish farm pellet looks like. So we take some time, eventually we get them onto uh, a commercial diet and we grow them right the way through to adult salmon in our tanks here at Drumsally. Each different river is entirely discreet in its own tank and they all have individual marks on them so we know which fish is which. So, for example, what we do is when we bring them in, we take a genetic sample. So we take a, a small clip of a fin, usually the tail fin, and we send that off to a genetic screening service. And they then tell us which fish is related to which fish. They tell us if there's any potential Norwegian gene in the stock from any escapes. And they also tell us the sex of the fish. So we start to build up information about each individual fish. So we need an individual tag on that fish to know which is which. Now, we, as I said, we grow them through to adult salmon, and then we have an adult salmon stock for each individual river. Now, at that point, we can just hold those fish and then replenish them every two years with clean stock. Or what we do is we electrofish the rivers and find out the density of juveniles in the rivers and sometimes we can go further than that and we find out the genetic uh, diversity within the population. So what I mean by that is we see how many parents produce the juvenile fish. And if that is a very, very low number, so just maybe in a river, maybe two or three pairs of salmon is producing all the juveniles, then we have the ability to restock from the brood stock we now have in the hatchery. So it's a twofold approach. One is an insurance policy and the other is a potential stocking policy where there is a need for stocking. But I'm really, really pleased to say this is, a, this is the first of its kind in Scotland. Um, we've started here in Drumsally. Uh, we've also got another Salmon Scotland funded outfit in uh, Otter Ferry down in Argyll. And uh, we hope that increasing numbers of rivers will, will be able to genotype their salmon material in the years to come with the help of Salmon Scotland. I'm Alastair Barge at uh, Otterferry Seafish. We've been rearing fish here since 1968. Started with trout and then quickly moved to salmon right at the beginning of salmon farming. We first became aware of this uh, initiative, Salmon Scotland Wild Fishery Initiative last year and working locally with the River Rule Fishery Board and the Argyll Fishery Trust uh, and John Gibb at uh, Salmon Scotland. Uh, we got our heads together, looked at the River Rule as a pilot project for uh, enhancing, enhancing the um, salmon population in the River Rule. Um, so 
taking existing fish there, relocating in a salmon hatchery situation and using the expertise from our agricultural background, coupling that with the fishery biologists, uh, Alan Kettlewhite from uh, the Argyle Fishery Trust, taking all that knowledge and mixing it together. Getting that together, I think, was a powerful combination uh, and the project has, has moved forward quite swiftly uh, and looking quite good. So the project started a couple of weeks ago um, with the fishery biologist electrofishing the river. So we went and joined in that process, which was, was fascinating. Um, and the idea was to catch 150 uh, par that would smolt next year. So we managed that in a, in a space of three days. We managed to catch 150 uh, S2, S2 par. And we brought them over here and we put them in our specialist unit um, into three tanks. The first challenge was would the fish settle coming from the river? Um, so we took them from the rural river, which is only separated by the top of a hill. So the water supply, our water supply here was quite similar to the, to the river rural. So the fish transferred very well, same temperature, very similar water conditions. Um, we gave them more cover in a tank than we would normally as an aquacultural system. Fish settled in well, we fed them on mealworms. Uh, which was new to us as aquaculture. We, be, we would be thinking of straight on to pellet. But um, some information from the wild sector and what the work they've done there. So we were using mealworms. Uh, we'll wean them off that onto a, onto a dry formulated pellet. So that's all going according to plan. But um, the interesting bits now that we're gonna uh, pit tag each individual fish, uh, we will genotype it and uh, then we'll be able to monitor the performance of each fish and we'll know the parentage of each fish. So there's, there's fascinating times ahead, generating data of the wild population now compared to a farm population now. So uh, it's 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 fascinating project. And the idea is that we will take those fish uh, from smolt, they'll smolt next year. Uh, we'll transfer them to salt water We'll smolt them in, in April 2025, and we would hope by December 2027, uh, we would have mature fish. We would be taking them right through to maturity. So um, you would see some farm fish here, but we would be hoping that our uh, wild fish would be mature in November 2027. So that, that would be the really the the end of the project, producing the eggs from the wild fish um, and enhancing the survival. If we, the 150 fish that we took out of the river, if we'd left them to go to sea and come back to return to the river rule, you might have had one of those fish coming back. We're hoping we might get 50 female fish out of this population. So calculations, I mean, you get an awful lot of eggs compared to that one fish coming back. We've got 50 fish, 50 mature females coming back. And um, genetically, the, the integrity of them is, that will be interesting to look at. But uh, the first stage looks very encouraging. We thought that was the difficult bit, going to get the fish from the river and let them settle into a farm situation. But they appear to be doing that very well. Um, and we will see what happens in the next two years. It will be fascinating. Salmon Scotland have, have kick-started this process, and this is this is a pilot, a pilot process to demonstrate uh, the potential of combining the wild fishery expertise with the agricult aquacultural expertise, and uh, it it could have amazing effects downstream. Um, for other for other rivers, uh, the River Rule is a typical west west of Scotland uh, river, and this this can be replicated uh, for many rivers. Could be something that would come for the future, and it would attract other funding. The success of this project, not just from 
Sam and Scotland, the way who have instigated it, but from the other bodies and landowners and fisheries, uh, when they see it commercially working, they, I think it could be a very significant contribution. I've lived here long enough to see the demise of, of wild salmon in the rivers. And it started before we started fish farming. The, the demise was, was, was in place. Um, it hasn't improved, it's continued to go down. Uh, and there are many causes for that. But uh, if we can start with the rivers, improving the habitats, and then helping to enhance the stock, I would be very keen to see some uh, benefit in my lifetime. <laughs>